but James Carter. Mr. Carter? My question is, do you believe you can be a devoted president to all the people in the United States? That question begins for Mr. Trump. Absolutely. I mean, uh, she calls our people deplorable, a large group, and irredeemable. I will be a president for all of our people. And I'll be a president that will turn our inner cities around and will give strength to people and will give economics to people and will bring jobs back because NAFTA, signed by her husband, is perhaps the greatest disaster trade deal in the history of the world, not in this country. It stripped us of manufacturing jobs. We lost our jobs. We lost our money. We lost our plants. It is a disaster. And now she wants to sign TPP, even though she says now she's for it. She called it the gold standard. And by the way, at the last debate, she lied, because it turned out that she did say the gold standard, and she said she didn't say it. They actually said that she lied, OK? And she lied. But she's lied about a lot of things. I would be a president for all of the people, African Americans, the inner cities, devastating what's happening to our inner cities. She's been talking about it for years. As usual, she talks about it, nothing happens. She doesn't get it done. Same with the Latino Americans, the Hispanic Americans. The same exact thing. They talk, they don't get it done. You go into the inner cities and you see it's 45% poverty. African Americans now 45% poverty in the inner cities. The education is a disaster. Jobs are essentially non-existent. I mean, it's, you know, I, and I've been saying at big speeches where I have 20 and 30,000 people, what do you have to lose? It can't get any worse. And she's been talking about the inner cities for 25 years. Nothing's going to ever happen. Let me tell you, if she's president of the United States, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to be talk. And all of her friends, the taxes we were talking about, and I would just get it by osmosis. She's not doing any me favors. But by doing all the others' favors, she's doing me favors. Mr. Trump, thank but, you. But I will tell you, she's all talk. It doesn't get done. All you have to do is take a look at her Senate run. Take a look at upstate New York. Your two minutes is up. Secretary Clinton, It turned out two to minutes. be a disaster. You have two minutes, Secretary Clinton. Well, 67% of the people voted to reelect me when I ran for my second term. And I was very proud and very humbled by that. Mr. Carter. I have tried my entire life to do what I can to support children and families. You know, right out of law school, I went to work for the Children's Defense Fund. And Donald talks a lot about, you know, the 30 years I've been in public service. I'm proud of that. You know, I started off as a young lawyer working against discrimination against African American children in schools and in the criminal justice system. I worked to make sure that kids with disabilities could get a public education, something that I care very much about. I have worked with Latinos. One of my first jobs in politics was down in South Texas registering Latino citizens to be able to vote. So I have a deep devotion, to use your absolutely correct word, to making sure that every American feels like he or she has a place in our country. And I think when you look at the letters that I get, a lot of people are worried that maybe they wouldn't have a place in Donald Trump's America. They write me, and one woman wrote me about her son, Felix. She adopted him from Ethiopia when he was a toddler. He's 10 years old now. This is the only country he's ever known. And he listens to Donald on TV, and he said to his mother one day, will he send me back to Ethiopia if he gets elected? You know, children listen to what is being said, to go back to the very, very first question. And there's a lot of fear that, in fact, teachers and parents are calling it the Trump effect. Bullying is up. A lot of people are feeling, you know, uneasy. A lot of kids are expressing their concerns. So first and foremost, I will do everything I can to reach out to everybody, Secretary Democrats, Clinton. Republicans, independents, people across our country. If you don't vote for me, I still want to be your president. Your I want to be the up. best president I can be for every American. Secretary Clinton, your two minutes is up. I want to follow up on something that Donald Trump actually said to you, uh, a comment you made last month. You said that half of Donald Trump's supporters are, quote, deplorables, racist, 
sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic. You later said you regretted saying half. You didn't express regret for using the term deplor deplorables. To Mr. Carter's question, how can you unite a country if you've written off tens of millions of Americans? Well, within hours, I, I said that I was sorry about the way I, I um, talked about that because my argument is not with his supporters, it's with him and with the hateful and divisive campaign that he has run and the inciting of violence at his rallies and the very uh, brutal kinds of comments about not just women, but all Americans, all kinds of Americans. And what he has said about African Americans and Latinos, about Muslims, about POWs, uh, about immigrants, about people with disabilities, he's never apologized for. And so I do think that a lot of the tone and tenor that he has said, I'm proud of the campaign that Bernie Sanders and I ran. We ran a campaign based on issues, not insults, and he is supporting me 100%. Thank you. Because we talked about what we wanted to do. We might have had some differences, and we had a lot of debates. Thank you, Secretary. But we believed that we could make the country better, and I was proud of that. I'll give you a minute, 20 We seconds. have a divided nation. We have a very divided nation. You look at Charlotte. You look at Baltimore. You look at the violence that's taking place in the inner cities, Chicago. You take a look at Washington, D.C. We have a increase in murder within our cities, the biggest in 45 years. We have a divided nation because people like her, and believe me, she has tremendous hate in her heart. And when she said deplorables, she meant it. And when she said irredeemable, they're irredeemable. You didn't mention that. But when she said they're irredeemable, to me, that might have been even worse. She said she's some of them are irredeemable. She's got tremendous hatred. And this country cannot take another four years of Barack Obama. And that's what you're getting with her. Mr. Trump, let me follow up with you. In 2008, you wrote in one of your books that the most important characteristic of a good leader is discipline. You said if a leader doesn't have it, quote, he or she won't be one for very long. In the days after the first debate, you sent out a series of tweets from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., including one that told people to check out a sex tape. Is that the discipline of good No, leader? it wasn't sex, check out a sex tape. It you, was just take a look at the person that she built up to be this wonderful uh, Girl Scout who was no Girl Scout. You mentioned by the, the way, just tape. so you understand, when she said 3 o'clock in the morning, take a look at Benghazi. She said, who's going to answer the call at 3 o'clock in the morning? Guess what? She didn't answer because when Ambassador Stevens... The question is, is that the discipline minute, of a good leader? 600 times. Well, she said she was awake at 3 o'clock in the morning. And she also sent a tweet out at 3 o'clock in the morning, but I won't even mention that. But she said she'll be awake. Who's got the famous thing? We're going to answer our call at 3 o'clock in the morning. Guess what happened? Ambassador Stevens, Ambassador Stevens sent 600 requests for help. And the only one she talked to was Sidney Blumenthal, who's her friend and not a good guy, by the way. So, you know, she shouldn't be talking about that. Now, tweeting happens to be a modern day form of communication. I mean, you can like it or not like it. I have, between Facebook and Twitter, I have almost 25 million people. It's a very effective way of communication. So you can put it down, but it is a very effective form of communication. I'm not unproud of it, to be honest with you. Secretary Clinton, does Mr. Trump have the discipline to be a good leader? No. I'm shocked to hear that. Well, it's, it's, it's not only my opinion, it's the opinion of many others, uh, national security experts, Republicans, former Republican members of Congress. But it's in part because those of us who have had the great privilege of seeing this job up close and know how difficult it is, and it's not just because I watched my husband take a $300 billion deficit and turn it into a $200 billion surplus, and 23 million new jobs were created, and incomes went up for everybody, everybody. African-American incomes went up 33%. And it's not just because I worked with George W. Bush after 9-11, and I was very proud that when I told him what the city needed, what we needed to recover, he said, you've got it, and he never wavered. He stuck with me. And I have worked, and I admire President Obama. He inherited the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. That was a terrible time for our country. We have to move along. Nine million people Secretary lost their Clinton, jobs. We have to... Five million homes were lost. Secretary and $13 Clinton, we're moving trillion on. Dollars in family wealth was wiped out. We are back on the right track. 
he would send us back into recession with his tax plans. Secretary Clinton, we are moving to an audience question. We're almost out of time. We have, we have another. Mr. Trump, we're moving to an audience question. Since 1929, it is our country has the Secretary slowest Clinton, growth, we and jobs are a disaster. Audience.